Hello folks, uh, I am Dr. PKJ and uh, this is a video uh, on ocular embryology. Uh, basically, uh, this is a common topic uh, and an important topic asked in uh, ophthalmology uh, where uh, which eye structures are derived from which germ layers uh, is often asked. Right? It's a bit of a volatile topic. So what I've tried to do is made, made it very simple for you guys to remember it using some mnemonics basically you will you will be able to remember this whole topic in uh, using just two or three mnemonics i promise so just stay with me and uh, if if you have a pen and a notebook just take these notes right so let's get started now uh, basically uh, in human embryology we have three germ layers uh, the ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm for ophthalmology there is no contribution of the endoderm at all so that's one less thing to worry about uh, we only have ectoderm and mesoderm right the ectoderm further has three parts uh, that lead that help in the uh, formation of the eye and its parts uh, we've got the surface ectoderm we've got the neuroectoderm and the neural crest cells right uh, most of the structures of the human eye are derived from neural crest cells right that's one MCQ right there. Basically, neural crest cells and mesoderm together uh, uh, form a layer what is known as the mesenchyme. So you can say that most eye structures develop from the mesenchyme, although you would not be wrong in saying that it's actually the neural crest cells uh, which form most of the structures because the contribution of mesoderm is not that much. So the takeaway from this slide should be that most eye structures develop from the neural crest cells, right? So basically the easiest way to remember eye embryology is to remember the other structures that are not derived from the neural crest cells. If you remember the structures derived from surface ectoderm, neuroectoderm and mesoderm, which are around 15 different structures. So if you remember those 15, uh, everything else is coming from the neural crest cell. So let's study what's developing from the neuroectoderm. And I remember this using the mnemonic rows. Correct? Basically, you have because the neuroectoderm, uh, you have to remember that the neuroectoderm produces the neural tissues of the eye. Right? So, what are the neural tissues of the eye? You've got the retina and you've got the optic nerve. Correct? So, retina both parts the neurosensory retina as well as uh, the uh, rpe both of those are formed so, so the neurosensory retina uh, which means the nine layers and uh, rpe which is the tenth layer are all derived from the neuroectoderm correct now remember that the rpe continues with the epithelium of the iris and the ciliary body so you've got the rpe and this which is continuous and also remember that the retina continues as the optic nerve also you must remember that uh, the sphincter and dilator muscles the smooth muscles of the iris receive the autonomic nervous system so they are under so they are functionally part of the nervous system correct so again Neuroectoderm produces the neural tissues. Neural tissues include the retina and the optic nerve. Retina has got neurosensory retina and RPE. So, an RPE continues as the iris and ciliary body epithelium. And the retina continues as the optic nerve. And also the sphincter and the dilator muscles of the iris. They receive autonomic nervous system supply, right? So they are functionally part of the nervous system. So you can remember these five structures and secondary vitreous, right? That, that's just remember something extra to remember. So if all of this is a bit difficult to think about in the exam, you just have to remember the mnemonic rose V, right? So R for retina. O for optic nerve, S for the smooth muscles of the iris, 
and E is for epithelium of the iris and the ciliary body. Correct. And V is for secondary vitreous. Right. So these five structures, rows V, are derivatives of the neuroectoderm. Now, uh, the surface ectoderm is uh, easy to understand, easy to remember. Think of it as forming the external surface of the eye. Correct. So uh, you've got externally you've got the epithelium of the lids then you've got the epithelium of the conjunctiva epithelium of the cornea right so that that's one thing then uh, also remember that this surface ectoderm on the surface you've got tears right so parts of the eye which have a function in maintaining the tear film will also be derivatives of the surface ectoderm. So uh, you've got the epithelium of the glands, right? And then the drainage, you've got the lacrimal apparatus. So that is also derivative of the surface ectoderm, right? In addition, you've got to remember that vitreous, the primary and tertiary one is a derivative of surface. Remember that the secondary vitreous was part of the, was a derivative of the neuroectoderm, right? So we saw epithelium, we saw the glands, we saw the lacrimal apparatus. These two basically are part of the, have a functional uh, association with tears. And then these, the epithelium of the lids, conjunctiva and cornea form the surface of the eye. So surface, surface, easy to remember. And just one thing that is commonly asked that must also be kept in mind is the lens, which is a derivative of the surface ectoderm. Correct. So if you remember the mnemonic level, L E V E L, that comes from surface ectoderm, it becomes very easy. These five structures, uh, just remember, are derivatives of surface ectoderm. Also, you can remember it as tears plus surface are derivatives of the surface ectoderm. And in addition, you've got the lens, right? So again, we are going to see this in the diagram here. The blue areas are derivatives of the surface ectoderm, right? So you've got level. You've got the eyelash follicles. You've got meibomian glands, Z small cross and wolfing glands. You've got the epithelium of the cornea. You've got the epithelium of the conjunctiva. You've got the epithelium of the lids. You also have the lacrimal apparatus and the lens. These are all derivatives of the surface ectoderm, right? On the other hand, the green structures are derivatives of the neuroectoderm. So neuroectoderm. We have to remember the mnemonic rose V, correct? You've got the retina and the optic nerve. So retina has the neurosensory retina and the RPE. RPE continues as the epithelium of iris and ciliary body, right? Then, so, so this is the epithelium of iris and ciliary body. Uh, in addition, uh, the smooth muscles of the iris, sphincter pupillae, dilator pupillae are supplied by the autonomic nervous system. So they also have a neural element to them. So they are also derived from neuroectoderm. And in addition, you have to remember the vitreous, which is the secondary vitreous coming from the neuroectoderm. Uh, whereas the primary and tertiary vitreous are derivatives of the surface ectoderm. So I hope so far it's clear to you. You have to remember two mnemonics, level and rose V. Level is from surface ectoderm. Another way to remember surface ectoderm derivatives is to remember lens, external surface and tears. So if you are able to associate those things with the structures involved in the functional uh, parts, uh, you'll be able to uh, remember the derivatives of surface ectoderm. Uh, neural ectoderm, Remember the mnemonic rose V or you can remember the neural elements of the eye and you will be able to figure out the five structures that are uh, coming from neuroid. Next we have mesoderm. Now mesoderm is 
uh, very easy because mesoderm remember muscles, right? In fact, the general rule is that all muscles of the body are derived from mesoderm, correct? There are only two exceptions. One is uh, the exception we just saw now, uh, the iris muscles that are derived from the neuroectoderm because they have a neural element. And in addition, you've got the myoepithelial cells, uh, myoepithelial muscles of uh, the skin and the mammary glands. So they are also uh, derivatives of, uh, those are muscles not coming from the uh, mesoderm, right? So remember those two mnemonics, uh, but apart from that, every muscle in the human body is a derivative of mesoderm. So here in the eye, you've got the extraocular muscles and you've got uh, the skeletal muscles of the lids, which is basically orbicularis oculi and LPS. So they will be derived from uh, mesoderm. Now remember that the extraocular muscles are inserted in the temporal sclera. So that part of the sclera is coming from mesoderm. So you've got temporal sclera. And in addition, you've also got the endothelium of vessels, which is a derivative of mesoderm. Uh, so remember the mnemonic T's for the derivatives of mesoderm. Here in this diagram, you can see that EOM and temporal sclera and then uh, endothelium uh, of the vessels, right? As well as the skeletal muscles of the lids are derivatives of mesoderm. If you remember those three mnemonics, uh, that is all you need to know. Everything else is a derivative of neural crest cells, right? Every other eye structure is a derivative of neural crest cell. You don't actually need to remember those structures, uh, but let's go through them, right? So you've got the stroma of the cornea, the iris, ciliary body, choroid, and sclera, right? So all the coats, right, that, that is your outer coat and the middle coat, they are being derived, majority of it is being derived from the neural crest. Except the epithelium, uh, the, all of those coats are more or less derived from the neural crest. In addition, you've got the corneal endothelium, uh, you've got the trabecular meshwork, you've got the ciliary muscles, right, you've got uh, the sheets of the optic nerve. Remember that the optic nerve, because it's a neural uh, element, it was derived from the neuroectoderm, but the sheath covering, the meninges covering the optic nerve would be, are a derivative of neural crest, right? Keenan's capsule is also a derivative of neural crest. Then in the orbit, you've got the adipose tissue, you've got ligaments, you've got connective tissue, all of that's coming from uh, neural crest cells. You also have uh, bone, cartilage, uh, and adipose tissue in the orbits, all derivatives of neural crest. In addition to this, melanocytes, uh, remember all melanocytes in the eye are derivatives of neural crest cells. I actually do not even remember this because uh, of the, the derivatives of the neural crest are easy to remember if you uh, know the other three mnemonics. Most of these questions are going to be all are derivatives of mesoderm except all are derivatives of surface do, surface ectoderm except all are derivatives of neuroectoderm except so, something like this. So most of these questions are very typical, uh, but it's just because it's very volatile. It's, it's a bit hard to understand. So you can see that most of the uh, pinkish structures or the purplish structures in this photo are uh, they are derivatives of your neural crest cells, correct? Uh, if you would, I'll, I'll revise them again here. You've got the optic nerve sheath. You've got the choroid, sclera, and tenons capsule. You've got uh, the ciliary muscles. You've got the trabecular meshwork. You've got the stroma and endothelium of the cornea. You've got the connective tissue of the orbits, you've got the orbital bone, you've got the fat, orbital adipose tissue, everything, neural crest derivatives, right? So just to summarize again, every structure in the eye is a neural crest 
derivative except a uh, surface ectoderm which produces level neuro ectoderm which produces rows v and mesoderm which produces t's right just remember this one slide and note this down in your notebook uh, wherever you revise your mnemonics from and i hope this video helped you uh, to remember uh, this very volatile topic and if it did please give it a like also subscribe to this channel uh, because i'm posting of technology content and do let me know in the comments below uh, because these are my early videos give me some feedback am i doing good am i doing okay <laughs> and what topics you like uh, me to discuss next uh, thank you for watching goodbye